Hi, my name is Carolyn Pluggett. I'm calling in today. I'm really sorry I can't be with you. Um, I would love to be in Goulburn area. Um, I come from um, Pangorong country down near Mansfield. Um, my husband and I run an organic farm here. Um, thank you for in inviting me to speak today. Um, I hope you have an inspiring and visionary day of connection with change makers and land stewards and your community. You know, we are keen to understand more about the wisdom of our Indigenous people and the sustainable way they continue to manage the land for over 60,000 years. I don't think we've done a great job for the last 200 years, and I think we need to listen more and talk less. Um, you know, what does resilience look like for you? You know, um, I want to share today a little bit about a story about bushfire appeal. Um, you know, but I don't think that Lismore or Cabago are ever going to fully recover. You know, how I, I think what they're going to do is find a new normal. Um, you know, how do we measure um, recovery? How do we ensure communities are safe and have the capacity to thrive? You know, where does farming and agriculture and conservation sit with um, the extreme climatic events that we've seen over the last two to three years? Um, you know, I think the answer is in how we sustainably manage our land, you know, and how we um, urgently transition um, to a more sustainable and more resilient um, community. And by community, I mean, you know, business and food um, and our regions and our cities. You know, I don't think one, anyone in those, um, those areas is more or less important than the other. I think that, um, you know, what we need to do is all pull our weight and all take, take a responsible outcome um, for, you know, what is a, a very steep hill that we all need to climb. You know, I think we need to connect these areas and we need to talk about some of the hard truths. Um, I don't think producers have been supported the way they need to be. Um, you know, and I think that we need to look at farm, you know, farmers and, and people from the land with a new type of respect and a new type of um, understanding that they are part of the solution here. You know, Oracle is a farmers cooperative. Um, you know, we have organic producers across states, commodities, um, um, including dairy, livestock, grain, horticulture and fruit. Um, it was really founded on the basis of trying to connect producers across different regions, different areas and different growing systems that were all trying to grow in, a, in an organic and sustainable way. Um, you know, we the organic industry is very strong in Australia. It, found, it covers over 39, mil, 39 million hectares of land. It's nearly $4 billion industry. Um, you know, in 2019, we started the bushfire appeal um, from one farmer calling us to ask about an organic load of hay. They were surrounded by bushfires and had a dairy herd that they couldn't, basically didn't have any feed for. You know, one community of growers in mid New South Wales, um, you know, by the end of February that same, the next year, um, we'd raised over half a million dollars and we knew that natural disasters weren't going anywhere. Um, we also knew that they were getting more fierce and they were getting um, more concerning for the farmers that were obviously trying to navigate through them. You know, our support included donations, biological imports, um, organic fodder, and a team of supporters that reached out to the farmers um, to assist them. The enormity on these producers was harrowing. I felt very humbled to be part of, of their journey in recovery. You know, the stories of bravery and, cur and, and courage were just really, um, you know, enlightening and I guess are deeply concerning for me as a producer myself. Um, I was really concerned that um, I wasn't sure how we were going to meet the needs of these producers. You know, since this time, we've had even more fires and, you know, obviously more recently, we've had the worst flooding in Australia's history. We all know the story. Um, many of us feel exhausted, farmers included, you know, communities, I've even had moments of natural disaster um, exhaustion where I really don't know how we're going to sustain or build resilience into these communities when pe a lot, many people's tanks are, are quite empty. You know, I, I think that those that are growing food um, are at extreme um, risk of the climatic um, pressure on us. You know, what does it mean for our food supply? And for producers that have been that have wiped out crops and for producers that have always done something um, as they've done for the last 50 years and suddenly they're going to have to transition to a new type of agriculture you know i think for producers to be resilient on the land you know we have to empower them with best practice knowledge you know with more diversity of growing options and with better profitability for their businesses you know while improving the land 
um, you know, and the crops that they're growing under these challenging conditions. You know, I think farmers need to be the best in class. You know, we need to be better than we've been before, not not with a cheaper product, not with necessarily more product, but we need to ensure that we're driven by the urgency around true sustainability. But also with that, I think we also need to look at the true cost of food. Um, I really question whether we understand the true cost of food in Australia not just compared to our international partners you know i think we do we do need to be more um, efficient and i think we need to be more diverse um, but i don't think we necessarily should be growing more um, more with a cheaper outcome or with a less cost outcome you know i i think that big business is part of this conversation you know i think that we need to not be showered with big numbers and ambitions about more yield and more product without actually questioning the impact that this may have on farm businesses and also the land itself. You know, on our, on our farm, we have a, 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 um, a, a um, message and, and that really is that the land is our dictator. The land tells us what we do. You know, we don't tell it what to do. Um, we work with the land in balance. You know, if something is unsustainable, it's not going to be able to be continued over the long term. And there has to be a downside effect that, uh, that that's going to have. You know, I think it's the same term with our long term food security. You know, we have to look at things um, through through a very long term lens. You know, following the, the bushfires and seeing the ongoing need, we transformed the fund to a resilience fund around natural disaster recovery. Um, you know, this is driven by our members, um, you know, because we've got members in all different areas, our non-affected members can help our affected members. Um, you know, we've got actively um, supporting volunteers that, that help producers remotely, that can call them and reach out to them, and really just to help them on their journey. Um, I think we need to look at the natural disasters with a wise eye. You know, we need to think about understanding what if we knew that they were coming, what would we do differently? You know, I need to understand, we need to understand the complexity of natural disasters and the strain that they put on our community and the urgency for this change and the awakening. Um, you know, I think w through the um, our journey with the Resilience Fund, we now have enabled producers to measure their restoration and their farms improvement over time. This actually started for mental health reasons. You know, it started because our producers couldn't bear to look at the, the bushland that had been burnt. It started because we wanted them to see hope that it was actually going to get better. You know, and I think if we all start to just measure where we are today, knowing that things are not perfect, knowing that we, we don't necessarily um, want to stay where we are today, but we want to be able to get better over time. I live in an area where in a, in a shameful way, um, so many of our beautiful hills and um, really rugged areas of, of Mansfield were, um, were cleared. And, you know, we um, planted um, over 1,500 trees over the um, winter, um, obviously in the very wet conditions that we've just been through, you know, with 35 different species of trees. You know, I'm very grateful for um, Andrew who helped us to be able to navigate that. We want to help more and more producers to be able to do more and more things that they can do within their capacity. Um, and if Oricop can do that across our hundreds of members and actually be able to fund the better, you know, and I think that that's the key part is that the producers are trying, you know, you know, really trying to help um, build a better product and build more diverse markets. Um, but it's actually the funding in behind it that is critical to that. Um, you know, we've um, enabled producers to be able to measure their restoration um, and, and be able to measure um, the better improvements on their farm over time. You know, we've developed Australia's first um, farmer owned carbon credit. Um, that's really based on um, trying to understand where the values and the trigger points are. Obviously, it's a carbon credit, but a carbon is only the first step. You know, and I think that it's so much more that um, it's important that we um, take that recovery and we actually build it into something that creates resilience over the long term. You know, if those changes could trigger a better understanding of ecological restoration, um, it's a better outcome for the producers. Um, you know, it, it enables the producers to record and measure their changed improvement over time. Um, it um, enables the co-benefits of these increases 
um, you know, and that's on soils and biodiversity. Um, it actually connects those with businesses that want to transition to a more sustainable um, outcome. So we've got some really nice examples where we've got, you know, dairy producers that are actually offsetting and supporting their producers to be able to become more sustainable over time. And those producers are able to plant more trees, they're able to plant more cover crops, they're able to diversify their businesses. Um, and, and I think that our, um, because we have an organisation that, that obviously connects um, producers across all different commodities, it's a really good example for other organisations to, to look at, that it's not commodity specific. Um, you know, we have measured outcomes and validation so that the people that are being part of the program can actually see the real outcomes and the real change. Um, you know, we want to see um, how we can diversify markets. You know, one of the key things I think for producers is how do we get out of the commodity market and how do we start to take more control of our own supply chain? Um, you know, we're building markets around cover crops. You know, we've got some really exciting opportunities happening in the Riverina area where we've got producers, you know, putting cover crops in and we're actually building markets for those specific crops. Um, you know, and I think that's a really exciting um, aspect rather than just growing these crops just for those measures. And, you know, we shouldn't be growing just the same crop year after year and thinking that, 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 that that's going to be okay with the planet, um, that that's not going to degrade the soil or enable the soil to recover and to be able to build um, more resilience to obviously more climatic extremes. You know, I think that um, producers can be able to take more control of their own supply chain. I think it's hard, you know, as a producer, I think it's hard to be able to um, market your product and grow it at the same time. What Oricop does is actually enable producers to come together to achieve that collectively. Um, and I think that that's how originally cooperatives had a real strength in, in communities. Um, you know, I think that if we can fund transition for farms, you know, with local regions, so our local region to say, well, we can help our own producers in our region to be able to become more sustainable and to be able to, for that food to enable that, that area to be more climate um, averse and, and more um, food secure. You know, I'm really concerned that in regional areas, I think we're very food insecure. Um, and I don't think it should be that way if we um, actually localize and really just look at decentralizing our food system. You know, I think all regional areas should be taking action. I think regional areas are really concerned about the impact of these, you know, severe events are having on our communities. You know, even from a mental health perspective, I think the strain on these communities is beyond what anyone else just even realises at the moment. You know, I think that these communities are, are really exposed. Um, and, and I think that agriculture is really at the coalface of how do we sustainably change and how do we sustainably transition? Um, and I think that, uh, you know, like I said, I think our producers need to be absolutely the best of what we can, what they can be and actually help them with the knowledge that's required to, to look at things through a different lens. You know, I think the way that we've looked at agriculture has been an input-based system. And I think what we need to do is look at it as a sustainable and a planetary driven system. You know, I think ways that our communities can take for the better you know, I think building stronger community networks, you know, I think it's fantastic that you guys have got such a great bunch of um, different organisations within your area um, to be able to help producers to take on um, some of these, you know, what can be quite overwhelming tasks. You know, I think um, all businesses should be looking at their sustainability footprint and saying, well, how do we reduce our sustainability? How do we improve you know, all of the measures that, um, you know, determine the sustainability of our businesses. You know, I think farmers should be measuring. I always say to pr producers, make sure you measure your baseline, you know, measure your biodiversity. You can use some really good resources to be able to um, look at near maps and, and look at your farm five years ago and then look at it today and saying, is it getting better? And what does that actually look like? You know, I think looking at energy, you know, community energy and regional energy and actually saying, well, how do we transition our region to be able to become less reliant on coal-based systems and actually more resilient over the long term? You know, and I think supporting local producers more often. Like I said, I, I think regional areas should be more secure. 
unfortunately, I think that they're less. And I, and I think that local areas, especially strong regional areas, can actually relocalise and take a lot of that processing and a lot of the reasons that agriculture has, you know, moved away from these areas, actually bring them back into these regions and enable them to be thriving regions that are far more sustainable in their principles. You know, I think that we need to ensure that what producers are growing are diverse, diverse crops and diverse businesses. You know, I'd love to be able to see farmers have off-farm income that actually is about enabling them to derive an income from their on-farm sustainability. You know, and that's not necessarily through carbon credits, but it can also be through um, systems that actually build, um, that reward their land stewardship. Um, you know, so I think there's a whole other other conversations around that that, can, that that can occur. You know, thank you very much for today. I really look forward to joining you next time. I um, really appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Um, if anyone wants to know any more about what we're doing in regards to the Bushfire and Resilience Fund or our EcoCredit, you can jump on our website or drop me an email. 